name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A very warm welcome to this Eucharist uh, at St George's Anglican Church, Paris, on this, the third Sunday of Easter. We give thanks to Almighty God today for the Eucharist, the thanksgiving that the Father, the Son, makes constantly to the Father in heaven, and in which we participate. Um, in normal times, we share bread and wine. Here, uh, you will see the bread and the wine, which is transformed by the Father, uh, in order that we, members of Christ's body, might live fully in him. The Eucharist is offered for all the living and the departed, but especially today, let us give thanks to God and pray for his blessing upon all those who are working so hard uh, to keep our world working. Members of our congregation who work in healthcare, members of our congregation who work in the government service, members of our congregation who are continuing to teach and to grow our young people. We give thanks to God for those who sit long hours at their computer screens. And we pray for all those who are in any kind of danger from Covid-19, from mental in unhealth, um, from uh, uh, social unrest and dislocation. And we give thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that in the light of all of these troubles, we have a sure support, a witness, uh, a work uh, that will explain all things uh, in God's purposes and plans. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate this morning's Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. gives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high. gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord. Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life 
and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who lived in Jerusalem. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. I am well pleased that the Lord hath heard the voice of my prayer, that he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The snares of death compassed me round about, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I shall find trouble and heaviness, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. I will receive the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows now in the presence of all his people. Right dear in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Behold, O Lord, how that I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast broken my bonds in sunder. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the sight of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, even in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On that same day of the week, the first day of the week, two of the apostles were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, 
It is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were in the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, they, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village in which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how it had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed as we say together. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the ways of righteousness and peace, and so to direct all kings and rulers, that under them thy people may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and uh, the President of France and to all that are put in authority under them that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, especially to thy servant Robert and David our bishops, that they may both by thy life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Guide and prosper, we pray thee, those who are labouring for the spread of the gospel amongst the nations, and enlighten with thy spirit all places of education and learning, that the whole world may be filled with the knowledge of thy truth. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee, according to thy promises, to grant them refreshment, light and peace. And here we give thee most high praise and hearty thanks for all thy saints, who have been the chosen vessels of thy grace and lights of the world in their several generations. And we pray that, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, we may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we and the company of Mary, Mother of God, George, Genevieve and all the saints, we may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. In the light of the resurrection, then, let us pray as our Saviour taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>